Whoa, whoa, so I am back. New week, new me, but Jesus, I guess I skipped a lot of trailers. Well, I'm catching up. This is me catching up to trailers. There was a trailer and I guess a video game announced for Dune? I had no idea. My reviews for Dune are a work in the progress right now. They will be coming out sooner, hopefully, than later. But there's a video game for Dune, and I want to see what we're getting here. So without further ado, let, let, let's see what we're getting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to watch the announcement trailer. I'm going from the jump, and then we're going to continue to where we're at currently. So let's go. All right. Full screen. Let's go. I must not fear. Oh, 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 the, mind the mind killer. Why did I skip over this somehow? How did I not? Fear is the little death that brings total obliteration. We we playing this a little bit higher audio. And through me. There we go. And when Let's it go. has gone past, I will turn the inner eye to see its path. For the fear is gone. There will be nothing. Okay. Cooking something here. They cooking something. They're really leaning on to the world. A survival MMO. Okay, I'm in. Let's see if they can get me hook, line, and secret with the other videos. Okay, so this is the trailer that was released two weeks ago. I wanted to do a trailer reaction on it. So much happened, but here we go. Let's do a trailer reaction, shall we? Let's watch this thing. Captured right, using Unreal 5.2 in game in an engine. This is surviving Arrakis, by the way. Okay. That look. I'm hoping they're gonna polish the game a little bit more. It doesn't look terrible, but definitely looks like it needs some polish. Yeah, for sure. That looks cool though. Oh. Ho, ho, ho. Bro, I'm just curious what the story of this game is going to be. Arrakis is a test. Few survive it. But the humans that do... Awaken. Okay. It's open world. Interesting. All right, let's let's watch this one. I don't know if I'm 100% sold on it. I'm sold, but not. I don't know. This is this unrelenting anvil against which people are beaten and shaped and forged into something that's stronger. 
There's something very spiritual about that sand, which on the surface is really nothing, but underneath has a really diverse biological backstory. The movies were so good. One of my favorite lines <laughs> from Frank Herbert is, when you end a novel, it's like a train coming into the station that doesn't stop. You just jam on the brakes and let the sparks fly into people's imagination. Mm. Arrakis is a test, is what the Fremen say. And the player comes right into the heart of that test. Dune Awakening okay. is a survival game at the base level. And it begins like a traditional survival game, you know? Like, you're looking for water, you're looking for shelter. You know, where will you find water in the desert? Will you, will you take it from others? So when we talk about survival, sure, we start with the basic kind of survival, survive. And then when you've survived long enough, it's now time to think about political survival and how you progress within the universe. Okay. The approach we take when building a world like Arrakis is, is we kind of have to think about where are the stark lines and how do we draw these epic spaces? How do we make them feel huge and the player feels dwarfed by everything they see around them? The intention was every time we saw the desert, it was highly brutal. And if you went out into the desert without the right protection and without the right knowledge, that it was sure. They got great Fraser. How much they pay him to talk on this? Deserts in the world. The visuals that we saw from <laughs> that dude is this guy's talented. Enough. We needed this world to be even harsher. So we've been working with Legendary since the very beginning. They've been very generous with sharing with us assets from the film and allowing us to see things from oh. the film and allowing us to really understand the the vision That's that actually David big. the new has for the the world and his characters and the way he's grounding Arrakis. But of course. A game is a much larger scale, so we need to expand right. upon that vision. We have our own army of concept artists who are sending things back and forth with Legendary all the time. One of my best moments on this project so far, actually, was I got to go and visit the set of the first film with a group of the people from Funcom, the art directors, the lead artists, and we got to walk around in the actual sets that they had built in classic old school set building, massive palaces, and we got to look at the ornithopters from the inside and the outside, right? We got to walk around them and get a sense of their scale. Mm. Well, I think what they had done really well is they'd been quite inspired by the world that we had built in June part one. Now, on a film, you're sort of led on a journey by the director and by the script, whereas in a game, you have the opportunity to sort of create your own narrative and create your own journey. The most exciting aspect for me I'm just going to be interested to see you where you can what sort you enjoy of go in the game. And you can build your own stories and your own places. And that to me is the ultimate goal is to have, you know, complete control. Using Unreal 5 to create a game is obviously one of the better choices. Unreal 5 gives us flexibility through the blueprinting system. It allows us to handle amazing graphics through the rendering system, the lighting system, such as Lumen. Lumen technology allows proper light bouncing. If I had to say one thing in the game that really benefits from Lumen, it's player crafted spaces. In our case, it's like you build a room and you place a window and the window lets in natural light and the light will fill the room in a way that feels real. And huh. that technology hasn't existed before. Before Unreal 5, in the olden days, you had to use what we called the LOD system. And that meant that you had to create assets at different LOD levels. So it doesn't slow down everybody's computer. With Unreal 5, we have this new technology called Nanite that breaks things down into the right amount of polygons at the right distance. So for us, as a company, this has made an amazing difference to the visual detail of the world. Sounds high level. It allows level. one really amazing looking cliff piece, for example. And then doesn't matter uh. how far away or how close we place it, it performs well and it looks great. Okay. So basically Where what he's saying, there shouldn't be any loading in was when you're moving around the world. <laughs> fantastic pre-production and planning tool. On June part two, we had some very complicated scenes and we were able to pre right. all the yeah, way from Budapest did what the light was going to be doing well in advance. It's the only tool that I've used, I, I would say, in my 25 years of shooting, that is able to be used across a wide spectrum of films by f different types of filmmakers. Mm. The most iconic creature in the Dune universe is the sandworm of Arrakis. And so we've tried to represent this Shy in many ways. So as a player, your first step's on the open sand. You hear the hiss of the sand in the distance as a sandworm begins to move towards you. And when it gets close, you hear the roar as it erupts from the sand nearby. And at that point, 
You have only seconds to live if you cannot make it to rocky ground. So this is your first experience with sandworms. And these are the little ones. When you go into the deep desert, when you're harvesting spice, the giant ring mouth sandworms that we've seen in the film will erupt underneath the spice blowers and suck harvesters and equipment down into the sand beneath them. There's really only one rule. The sandworm will always come. <laughs> Humans have always had this innate drive to create something, to build worlds, whether it's in their head, whether it's in text, whether it's on screens, whether it's in games. Funcom as a company has been on this journey for a long time, creating multiplayer worlds where players can live out their dreams and fantasies. We were there in the beginning with massively multiplayer online games. We've been there in the beginning with survival open world crafting games. And Dune is a combination of those legacies, bringing us forward into the future. It's the culmination of what Funcom means as a company and what we can I'm interested about. to see and how this legacy plays. Means that we need to Especially because it's an MMO. What we're creating and how we create it. James, if you're watching this boy, because we going we got to play this. <laughs> who really want to live in the universe that Frank Herbert created and they really want to live and Glenn in the visual <laughs> world of the films that they see from Villeneuve. And so we need to create These a about gap go crazy. between those two possibility spaces <laughs> and create a game world where people can live out their fantasies that they've taken from Dune. And yes, it's a huge legacy and it feels at times extremely overwhelming. Okay, I, I just really want to play it now. Deliver something for everybody. I just want to play the game now. I just... Ah. Did they, re did they release a release date? I don't think they did, but... Okay, I'm sold. I was a little bit iffy at the, at the front of it, a little bit uh, unsure, but now I'm kind of sold on it. You guys let me know what you think on it. I think it looks cool. Obviously, there's still stuff about the graphics that feel like it should be polished, considering that it's Unreal Engine. Uh, that being said, it looks fun. I mean, I want to play in a Dune world. I want to be creating a character in a Dune world. I want to live in a Dune world for a bit and escape into that universe that Frank Herbert created. So this is it. So hopefully they stick the landing. So... Yeah, you guys let me know what you guys think about it. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be catching up. You might get, like, just saturated with trailer reactions. Um, whichever ones you want to watch, they're there for you. But hopefully you like every single one of them, including this one. Leave a like, like I said, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.